Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. And I'm here to tell you that you are where you are. And where you are is not a, a good place in a sense. <clears throat> because I don't know how old you are. But you're looking in retrospect of life, you are saying in your head, I should be further ahead. By now, God should have answered this prayer. By now, so many things should have happened already in my life. And I know the voice of God. But God will tell you as they were singing the second song. It says to take courage, right? Take courage to my heart. And it's so easy to say. Do you know how many, many times I have said, take courage to my heart? And it's easy to say that. But it's difficult to live it. When your heart is telling you that God will not answer you, that God won't answer you. But we spoke about tonight, and I don't know who of the ones singing said that tonight God has something special for you. That tonight there is a breakthrough happening in so many people. And it's up to you. And you know what I saw? Because I love popcorn. I saw like popcorn things. Like, <clears throat> you know when the popcorn you're making like, I burn the popcorn so I don't make it like that. But when you put it on the stove, you know the old way, and then you put it and you start seeing it like popping and it's like that. And I saw, like, whoever wants your breakthrough, whoever wants your miracle, he said, I'll give it to you. And it doesn't matter what you thought this morning. It doesn't matter what you thought when you came in. It doesn't matter what you've been thinking for months or years. He says, if you want it, I want you to know that I'm a good God. I am a good God, and I want you to know that I never change. And that's the hard part. He never changes. He never changes, but he's always expecting us to continually be transformed and be transformed and be transformed. So I'm going to tell you that you're never going to arrive. He just takes us from glory to glory. This is not even part of my message. But I, wanna, I, I want you to be bold. If that's you, like you've been at a point in your life that you said, you know what, I don't, need, I don't even know if Christianity or I don't even know if God is working in me. I don't even know if he's answering me. All I hear is silence. But I'm going to tell you that he is in the silence. He is in the midst of your silence. He is with you. He loves you. He loves you. And guess why? Because he loves you. Like it's hard to comprehend the love of Jesus. It's hard to comprehend why does he love us. And he's relentlessly, whatever you're believing God for, and, and you're believing for great things. I'm not talking about, like, uh, when I'm making this call, I'm not talking about you, you've been believing for a car. You know, like, okay, you can get a car. I'm believing for something that only God can do. That only he can do it because it's out of your reach, out of your own nature, out of your, uh, out of your resources, out of your own mind. No, this is the only, I know if this has happened, it's because God is has given it to me, will give it to me. And when he promised, whatever he promised, hold fast to the confessions of your faith, knowing that he who promised is faithful. It didn't say knowing that he who is believing is faithful. We're going to be unfaithful during our holding on. He knows that. But he says, don't, don't fix your eyes on you letting go. Coming, Have you ever, you know, I've, I picture myself sometimes like holding fast to the word of God and, and holding fast to this big tree. Just like, you know, and, and the wind is blowing and, and it's like that, right? But you're, but you're holding on, you're holding on, right? You're holding on because this is, this is what I know to do. I'm going to hold it on. And you're holding on, but I want to I wanna let you know that you think you're doing everything, all the workout. God is giving all, he is doing the all workout for you. He's the one keeping you, keeping you in there, keeping you holding fast. So if that's you, I want you to stand up because I want to pray for you. So no one's believing for a miracle here. You see, just, just, I'm standing with you. Okay, I'm standing with you, and, and this could have been at the end, but I'm like, mm, God won't let me. 
You know, we have to do what he, he asked us to do, right? Because imagine I would have said it and it would be the only means standing. Even if it was me, it would be good. So this is what I want you to do. You know that in any moment, in any moment, you and I can get right with God. Because according to God, he sees us through his son, Jesus. And I'm going to get into that. But you're like, you have no, no idea the things that I have debated with God, the things, my thoughts, not just my good thoughts. And that's not God calling you. But my bad thoughts, my ugly thoughts, in, 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 the, in the muck, in, in the dirtiest place. He, he knows all things. And yet he wants to give it to you. So today all we're going to do is we're going to say, God, forgive us. Forgive us for allowing the silence. Forgive us for not allowing to see things. And we want to see things in our timing. He's an eternal God, so he has no time. He lives above time. But I'm going to tell you that he promised it to you. You will see it come to pass. Say, I will see it come to pass. And I'm going to hold fast to that confession of my hope, of my faith. It doesn't say hold fast to the confession of the problem, of the situation. No, we hold fast to his word. And I know I'm, I'm speaking to the choir because I live what I'm telling you. So it's not easy to speak something that you don't see and you want to see. But it's God, it's, it's almost telling you, okay, you're either going to believe me. Let's make a decision tonight. Let, let's commit and let's do it. So close your eyes. And bow your head and just pretend. Pretend that it's only you and God and no one else. This is an audience of one and it's only you and him. And you came to church and didn't want to come to church. But he brought you here tonight just to let you know that what he promised. He is more than able, capable of doing. And because he promised, his word never, ever 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 returns void unto him and he says it and it's according to your faith and father forgive us because in many times during our faith we have just flopped to the floor it's in the in the journey of faith that we have questioned things that we have allowed things but tonight we're saying, you know what, it doesn't matter what I allowed yesterday or days ahead or even this morning or even a few minutes ago. What it matters is that I get right with you tonight. And I have access through, through, your, through your throne room of grace. I can come at any point. I don't need no one. I can just come in into your presence knowing that you want me to plead my case. Because your answer for your case is yes and amen. So, Father, I declare miracles taking place. I declare the mindsets are being broken. I declare the deliverance. You're bringing deliverance to our souls, to our minds. For freedom, you have set us free. And the enemy will come and try for us not yet to enjoy our freedom. Well, God says, rejoice in the freedom that I have given you. The freedom to believe. The freedom to speak. The freedom to declare. The freedom to get up every morning, whether you feel like getting up or not. But you have the freedom to stand up and you say, God, your mercies are new every morning. We have benefits being downloaded from heaven daily. And God said, all we have to do is grab a hold of his mercies. Grab a hold of our faith and our hope. And that one thing that the Bible says that we never lose is hope. And you know why? Because it's Jesus. So tonight we receive our hope. And we anchor ourselves in your word. Knowing. That you who promise are faithful. So I receive. And you can say whatever you're believing for. You don't have to say it. Think it. And you say, thank you, Lord. I won't relent. I will see it come to pass.
and I will declare that it was by your hand and that you called me on a Wednesday night and you blasted me off and they made me stand up. But I did it because I believed you in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. So I might believe that in the, I don't know, I don't even know when I'm going to give five weeks. But I'm going to believe that in five weeks, we're going to have a Wednesday of celebration. I'm just going to say it. You know what, because if we don't say it, this is the way I used to believe. I have to be very careful what I say because if it doesn't happen, then I'm going to look bad. But the word is not on me. The, the promise is not on me. I'm not, I'm not speaking my own opinion. And believe me, many times I just want to, I, I would like to carry a bunch of like white towels, you know, like when you're giving up. like. Mm. That's why I don't wipe white, white towels. No, I do have white towels. I like them. But sometimes I think, wouldn't it be easy to just, just flag something? Do you know that we're, every day that we wake up, do you know that you serve someone? You either serve yourself, you serve God, or you serve our enemy. And we do have an enemy. But we're yielding to somebody. I had a moment with God. I know I'm going, I'm, I'm going into, uh, into rabbit trails, but, but go with me. Go with me, my rabbit trails, yeah? I'm going to tell you why. My husband's not here, so I can tell you why. A year ago, I, wa I went to uh, Bethel, and then I, before I went, I was having that moment, you know, when they pray for you and they give you a word, right? And I had this thing always since I started preaching, and those who were here on my first preaching, I think I have a few, like, who was here in my first preaching? I think Pastor Fabi, you, right? You guys can see, when I started, I, I would be like that, right? And it wasn't because of the power of God, it was because I was shaking, <laughs> So I didn't start where I'm at today. And I sounded, uh, that's what I wanted to sing because I sounded like, eh, eh, but it was because, you know, nervousness. What? Have you heard those people are very nervous and then you can, they kind of have a shaky voice? I was like, Jesus, you should have given me a voice because then I will sing everything. You know, and the trembling will be like I'm dancing, right? <clears throat> will be more animated. But... So I always pray to the Lord and I said, I hate, you know, you, you can hate something that God gives you because you don't like yourself, because you, 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 you compare yourself to someone else, right? They do it so good. But I was in, in, in one of those, in those uh, moments in my life. And then God addressed me and then I will get strong, right? And then within a year, it will come back again. I'm like, oh, it's going to rabbit trails. I hate going to rabbit trails. Not that I said it to people, maybe to my daughter or a few of my friends, right? Oh, I am a rabbit trail person. And I don't know if I lose the people in the holes, you know? <laughs> so come back. Come back. I lead the light. You follow me and come back. <clears throat> and so I go there. And then before that, I was like, <sighs> I said to, I thought to myself, and I said it like, you don't even know how much you dislike yourself. And if you don't love yourself, it's, how are we going to love others and how do we love God, right? But I, I, I told the Lord, I hate my rabbit trails. That's what came to my mind. Like they said, prepare, right? Other people were singing in the spirit. Have you ever gone to Bethel? It's really neat, right? They're singing in the spirit. They were like, nee, nee, nee. right? And I was like pretending. I'm, I'm not going to do that. But I was like, oh, hey, rabbit trails. Because <laughs> you don't want to be not the only one, right? So you're like, mm -hmm. And then you don't have like, you don't have like rhythm because I, oh, I can only do salsa. So you, I would have been look. <laughs> so I was like, okay. <clears throat> so you're like. But this is what I'm thinking, right? And everybody's like, ah. like beautiful, like beautiful. Alexis wasn't doing it. She's like, I'm not doing it. <laughs> she, she knows who she is. I was like, let's do it. Come on. Like. <clears throat> and so the first thing when this person comes to me, he said, I have a word from heaven. And I'm like, yes. Tell me. What is God going to tell me? He says, I am giving you permission to go on rabbit trails. No, I was like, you were giving me permission? Have you talked to my husband? No. <laughs> <laughs> he 
He's, you know, he's, he calls me a shotgun, not rabbit trails, but I call myself rabbit trails. But I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Well, two weeks ago, my son was preaching, and I was like, oh, my God. He, I was so proud of him, you know. But I want you to know that sometimes you see, you see people on stage. You see people preaching. You see people, like, um, praying for others. You see people operating in the gifting. And you, and you see, oh, they're, like, they're mighty. But I'm going to tell you that they didn't start there. They didn't start there. I'm going to tell you where I started. And I know are we are videotaping this because I didn't start on stage. You know, when I started, you can follow me. Because I'm wearing high heels so you can see me. But I, but I started in the back. I started full of fear. And then God shows you a vision of one day. You speaking, oh, that God is going to use you in such a mighty way. And then it sounds awesome because the, I can see the picture. But he doesn't tell you the in-between steps. But in 22 years, I decided to follow Jesus even when I didn't feel like it. In 22 years, if I didn't have the right people in my life pushing me, literally pushing me to believe that when God affirms something, when God speaks something, he will do it. He will do it. And then he shows you like something that is super high, like, and you're like, how am I going to get there? I'm going to tell you that nothing that God shows you is going to be easy. You give, me, you give me a scripture where it says life is going to be easy for you because you are a son of God. Give me one. Your life, you're not going to struggle with your faith because I have called you before the foundation of the earth. And when I was watching my son, I, I said, he didn't get there by osmosis, you know, like a fairy sprinkle from heaven. In my startup here as a church, I would pray to God, I want to see Gold dolls. But there's not, I mean, I have, there is gold dolls sometimes. I, people have said it. Like, I saw it. But like, you should have called me. I wanted to be under the rain. And then I thought about his walk. You know, my son, he was even saying, like, I, they always use me because I will never listen. No, it's because my son is passionate, man. I'm a passionate woman. You know what that means, right? Have you met passionate kids? When they're two, those are passionate kids. Okay? I'm a passionate woman. Don't mess with me because. But now I'm safe, so I have to put away my, you know. But then I thought, and, and people were, I posted a picture and people were giving all these encouraging words. And even teachers that, that were able to speak into his life when he was little. And I thought, oh, my God, these are the same teachers that want him out of the class. <laughs> I, tell, I tell you one thing. They always spoke life into him, into his life. And then I remember when he turned 12. And those were even more terrific years. When you wake up one morning and you don't even know who is a human being living in your home. But then God told you and he gave you a promise that your whole family is going to serve God. But now he's 12 and he doesn't even want to come to church. And so I went through all these things and then I thought, my gosh. You know, sometimes I know that we haven't entered our promise so we're not eating out of the good of the land because we are so afraid to risk it all and believe that God says who he says he is. And then within our own limitations and our own failures and our own mistakes and our past and our, all of our junk that we come with, all of our brokenness that he's still rooting for you and I. Do you know how hard to believe sometimes you, you, 
because you go inward and you're like, oh, that's not me. But then at some point, I have to believe to myself and say, Virginia, yes, your life doesn't belong to you anymore. So yes, you stop, put away the, the white towel already. And the urge to stop and to quit because it gets too hard. So that's why I call it, it is good for me. And I want you to go to that, to that, to that scripture. And I'm going to tell you what's good for you. Psalms 119, 71 to 77 says this. It is good for me that I have been so comforted. Is that what it says? What does it say? This is Wednesday. You can speak. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. And he says that I may learn your statutes. Okay, what is he talking about? The word of God. It's been good for me that life hasn't been easy. The law of your mouth, which is the word of God, is better to me than a thousands of coins of gold and silver. Your hand have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I might learn your commandments. Those who fear you will be glad when they see me because I have hoped in your word. Why? Because I was afflicted, but I hoped in his word. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes while you're afflicted, it doesn't look good. Well, actually, it never looks good. Let's come, we go. I know, O oh Lord, that your judgments are right and that the faithfulness and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. It's because his faithfulness that he has afflicted me. That means like, oh, then I thought that God loves me. No, no, what he says is like, I'm not going to spare you from giving you the opportunity to grow, Virginia. I'm not going to spare you because I need you to be strong. How can I tell someone to pray and to encourage themselves if I never done it for myself? How can I pray for someone and believe like, oh, God heals, but God has never healed me of anything because I live a life of comfort. It's in his faithfulness that afflictions will come. Let, I pray, your merciful kindness be for my comfort according to your word to your servant. Is that my last scripture? Let your tender mercies come to me, that I may live for you, law is my delight. You know, I thought to myself, like, I have complained. I can't, we, we are, but this is church, right? We, we, this is our training ground, right? Every time that I have been afflicted, I always complain. I mean, I mean, I'm just being me, right? I complain. I'm like, God, thank you, Jesus, for this affliction. I'm yet to say that. But today as I was writing that, I said, Father, forgive me because if I'm afflicted and he will never give you more than what you can handle. I mean, I'm like, okay, Lord, that means, you know, because you're trying to encourage yourself, right? Okay, that means that you trust me a lot, Lord. I don't trust you, but you do trust me. But think about it, right? Because he says he's never going to give you. So if you're going through a trial, a tribulation, I don't know, through a sickness, to the, the hardest time of your life. So he's never going to give you more than you can handle. You personally. Maybe not someone else. Maybe not your neighbor or your friend. But you can handle it. Whatever you're going through, oh, you can handle it. I have sat with God, had conversations to cup my coffee cup and say, I cannot. He's like, oh, yes, you can. No, I can't. And that will go forever. And whose word stands at the end? His word. Okay, you can stay there for a while, girl. But I know that you can. You know, one of my heroes of the... Of the, I would say, of the 20th century, right? Because that's when Mother Teresa, uh, I think, went to heaven. And yes, she was Catholic. And I, I'm a reader, so I read one of my heroes of faith. Because you saw what she did. And she was so in love with Jesus. I mean, that woman was in love with Jesus. You should watch a documentary. 
But I read when she, she had a journal every day. And she would journal every day. And I'm going to tell you that every day since she became a mother or before she became a mother, because first she was a sister, right? And then she went to a mother, Teresa. So first she was a sister, Teresa, and then she went to a mother. But since she was a sister, the enemy will come and tell her everything that she was not. She said that she was the clumsiest. Her job that they gave her was to just lit up a candle because they couldn't trust her with more. And she said that the, for the first year, she went and lit the candle and she would shake like a leaf. That the candle will always fall. And the other nuns, you know, you know how church is, right? They, they, they're very, uh, uh, what word am I using? They're very encouraging, right? <laughs> they go to the mother superior. We can't even trust her. Look at her. Every day she's dropping the candle. Come on, it's sacred. <laughs> and this is real. And she said that she can hear what they would say, but she, she chose and she said, I'm going to keep my heart. I'm going to keep my heart intact for my maker, for my husband, who is Jesus. And if you read her entire, her entire uh, uh, autobiography or what they did with her letters, because those are her letters. No one else is speaking for her. She said that at 3 in the morning, she will, she will stand at 3 in the morning. She will get, wouldn't get out of bed until she addressed every thought, every critical voice, everything that she was going to be exposed every day, what people were going to say, what the other nuns were going to say. She said, I, until my heart is fixed upon my Jesus because I represent him, I'm his wife, I am not getting up. And you know what's funny? That when people, when all these letters came out, like their own people, got to love them, right? Because everybody said, like, then why? Because they canonized her, right? Is that the word? That they made her a saint. And we're all saints according to Jesus. So we're like, why is he a saint? You're a saint. That's how God sees you. Like literally, you're a saint. You're like, you don't know what? What kind of devil I am? <laughs> well, let me tell you that your heavenly father, if you're not a son of God or a daughter of God, he sees you as a saint. You've been washed by the blood of Jesus and no one can take that. But you know, everybody said, why? Why would they, why, they, why do, are we even going to do that? Because she, every day she questioned God. You know what? She didn't care. She questioned God. She had all her frustrations. But it's what she did and what she believed at the end of the day. And everyone says, you would never thought that she was thinking all those things. And I read some of her letters and I cried with her. Because she would say, Jesus, I don't feel you. I'm in the darkness. How am I going to feed these kids? Like she would be like so like legit with God and Jesus. And, but, but then you, she would be like, Dave, but, but I know that you're going to supply what I need. I know that your, your grace is sufficient. And, and I praise you for that. And my mouth will give you glory. And nothing, nothing that's negative will come out of my mouth. I'm just going to be your vessel today because I am married to you. And I thought, what a beautiful what a beautiful woman. Why am I saying that? Because sometimes we think, I'm never going to do great things because you don't know what I think. Or you don't know what I think. But it doesn't matter what we think. At the end of the day, it's the thoughts are going to come. And they continue to come. The accusation, we have, a, we have our own critical voice, right? There's one that exists within us, the voice that, that tells you, the voice that people tagged us when we were little or whenever. And then we have the voice of the accuser. But I'm going to tell you now, I'm, I was thinking, Lord, you know, sometimes we don't see it like, you know what, it was good for me. You know what, it was good for me. The hardest year of my life, and it's been till now, working my salvation daily. 2016, I wanted to go to heaven. But, you know, in retrospect, and what you're only going to know what's good for you in retrospect when you're like, okay, that's not, um, okay. Compared to 2016, 2017, you know what? It was good. It was good for me. Because now I know how to encourage myself. Because now I know how to get up when I don't feel like getting up. Because now I don't only know how to do it for myself, but now I have the heart for others that feel the same way. So 
I think we get caught up, like we hear it in the in the in, in, in the church, you know, what's your purpose? I've heard like, what's your purpose? I hate it when people used to say, so what's your calling? What's your purpose? Okay, I don't hate it anymore, but you know. Give me your purpose. Give me your five-year plan. I'll shut up. <laughs> I, I don't even know what I'm gonna do today. I barely can make it. Are you asking for a five-year plan? My plan is to not throw the towel today. <laughs> right? Until you get stronger. But you get stronger. I'm not saying we stay there, right? But we get stronger and we get stronger and we get stronger. Life doesn't get easier, but you get stronger in Jesus. And you know, and people are always going to talk because some people get very, very comfortable. You know, when I started, I have all these people. And, you know, you gravitate to the people that are like you, the loners. You know, because I'm very loner. Like, and it's awesome because we, don't, we didn't talk. Right? You sit, I was sitting in the back. She doesn't talk. I don't talk. Perfect. <laughs> Let's be friends. And you exchange phone numbers because we're never going to talk. <laughs> right? I mean, I've done it. Thought she would be a good friend. And I did it. I exchanged numbers. We never called each other. We saw each other sitting together. Yes. But then you're compelled because God loves you. He woos you and he loves you. And so you're, you, you're growing, you know. And then I said, you know what? Now I need friends that talk. I don't want to talk, but it's good friends. I need friends that talk. Like, in order for me to grow, they, I need them to pull things out of me. And, and then I get my phone number. And then they will call me. Remember in those times, we didn't have cell phones, right? Because this is like 20-something years ago. So you're like, oh, my God, you see. But you had it. Who was calling you? You're like, oh, no. <laughs> and then you're training your children not to lie. And now they know how to, how to read. Hey, your friend so-and-so is calling you, Mom. And I wanted to say, tell them that I'm not here. But what are you teaching? How many times have you told, you, you tell your kids, we don't lie, we don't do this. But then we're going to go to church and we're going to say that this weekend we were here. Or we, we're teaching them how to lie. So I was like, I remember the phone call coming. I was like, tell them that, um, tell them that, um, okay, let the machine pick up. And then I grew out of that and then I answered my phone and then I enjoyed the conversations and then now I don't, can't even let people talk. Why? But it didn't start like that. But I'm going to tell you something. I, sometimes as you're growing, other people are going to despise your growth because they want you in the same place stuck. They're like, why, why, why are you changing? We were so cool not talking. We can go to the park and just not talk. The kids play and we just look at the kids. Right? I'm going to tell you that when God promises something, he is going to make it come to pass. And he doesn't want you to stuck. Like we get stuck in, what's the purpose? No, he's not, the purpose he gave it to you. He gave you, okay, well, you're going to do this. So don't worry about what you're going to do. It's worry about the process, not even worry. But the thing is that he's more interested in the process in your journey. What are you going to do in the in between? I'm not where I used to be. I'm not really over there anymore. Where my comfort was. And now he's showing me a, a different picture and it's over there. But I'm not even enjoying that picture because I'm in between. But then he wants you to see it like, hey, but at least I'm not in the same place. You got to celebrate. When you get into various trials anyways, right? He afflicted me because he loved me out of his faithfulness. He has brought things to my life that I thought I did. I, they were already dead. They, they were out of my life. But out of his faithfulness, out of his mercy, he brought all of that. And people will come to afflict you as well. And people will talk about you. Do you know that we don't have to worry about that? Somebody say, yeah, no, let's not worry. Be happy. Two scriptures, Psalms 37, 24, uh, 23 and 24 says, The steps of the good and righteous man, that's you, 
You're like, but I'm not good. Oh, well, if you're in Jesus, you're good, according to his eyes. And righteous men are directed and established by the Lord. And he delights in his way and blesses his path. When he falls, he will not be hurled down. Because the Lord is the one who holds his hand and sustains him. So that means during the journey, he says, if you fall, you know what the word hurled down means? It means to be violently thrown. Thrown with the grace force, push or impel violently, utter abuse. Do you know that God won't abuse you when you fall in your journey? You know that one, the voice that is telling you like, ah. Yeah, you were doing so good, but remember what happened? Remember what you did? He says, you know what? If, if when you fall, right? It doesn't say if you fall, because he knows that you're going to fall. He says, when you fall, I'm not going to throw you away. I'm the one who sustains you. I'm the one who's holding your hand. I'm the one who's going to take you to your end. If I promise you, I promise you. And I'm going to guide you. And when you don't see me, I am with you. And when I'm silent, I'm actually more, more so with you. You know, in the in-between, I'm going to tell you how you win. If you can survive, okay, because at the beginning we're surviving. But God wants you from surviving to survive to thriving right but if you can survive all of the questions that will come to your mind if you can survive the uncertainty because you're like what the heck is happening I don't know if I'm up or down if you can survive the doubts the confusion because that's the way it feels not being where I used to be but not being where I want to be If you can survive the haze of the frustration, of the in-between, and you hold fast to the hope of your glory, you'll make it. Because he has set in his heart to prosper you. God has set in his heart for you to be whole and healed. God has set in your heart for you to walk in freedom. God has set in his heart already. Sometimes it's like a friend of mine said, it's, it's like we're, we're, we're sitting with God and we're trying to convince him to do something that, he, he's like, why are we talking about this? I want to do it for you. We're like, God, can you deliver me? Please deliver me, Lord. Like, for freedom, I have to deliver you. No, but can you free me again? And he's telling you, you don't have to try to convince me. It is done. But you're the in, in between. And the in between is when you get people that you need that will speak and remind you what God spoke. And the in between is when you get people that will pray for you. In the in-between is when people that will speak life over you, people that are not going to condemn you, shame you, guilt you, but they're going to remind you, you know, you are a daughter of God. I know it doesn't feel good, but God is good. And when he is good, he is good. I'd rather be in the in-between of God than in my own in-between. Do you know that even your enemies sometimes are, he even uses your enemies. We're, we're concerned about enemies. So he said, bless your enemies. They're not even a concern to me. Where I'm taking you, people are going to talk crap about you. Crap, it's in the Bible. They're going to talk all these things about you. He's not concerned. We're the one concerned. Oh my God, deliver me. No, he says, bless them. Psalms um, 110 in verse 1 says, I'm just I'm going to say the second part. He says, sit on my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. You know, sometimes you don't even know how to get there. But people are like, have you met people that are just trying to find something wrong with you? And they blast it on. Oh, since I have come to the Lord, since we came to do this church, my goodness. I thought that I was like, honey, oh, Nutella, whatever you like, agave, whatever. Sweet, everybody loves me. Ah, 
oh, I received the most horrendous emails, texts, voicemails. The first year that I preached, do you know that every Wednesday I got a phone call from the devil? It said the devil. I'm not, I'm not kidding, I'm kidding you. It would be 6666 and it said the devil. And I'll be you? I'm not even going to say it. You know, it doesn't even deserve my attention. But for a whole year, every Wednesday. Enemies, right? And that was in the midst of my shaking, you know. And the Lord said, the enemies, you know what, use them. You step over it. And it, you know what, that's going to be my step to go higher. Because they're your footstool. So you don't have to be afraid. Let them talk. Bless them. Send them flowers. And for a man, I don't know what they want. What do they like? What do you like, guys? Like knives? No, don't send that. <laughs> I'm going to close with this. And you know, he gave you a purpose. We all have a purpose, but it's up to you if you want to partner with his process. We all have a process. Jesus had a process. And I'm going to give you my last scripture. I know I already said that. You're like, you already said it three times. Well, that was another rabbit trail. Welcome back. But at least I brought you back, right? You were stuck in, where was it? In Psalms. Now I'm taking you to Timothy. I'm closing. First Timothy 2, 5 to 8 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. Why would it say the man Christ Jesus? Who gave himself as a ransom for all. To be testified in due time. Everything that God has asked us to do, every promise that he has given us, it has a due date. But I want it now, I want it yesterday. For which I was appointed as a preacher and an apostle. This is uh, Paul speaking. The truth in Christ and not lying, he said. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without what? And doubting. He said, you know what? You don't have to worry. You already have someone. We have a representative. Do you understand that? I'm able to stand here today because that I, I stand on that word. You know what? I have a mediator. And it says the man, Jesus Christ. Why? Because God wants you to know, to know that you mediate, you're, you're the one who represents you before the Father. He relates to you. God couldn't relate, right? God didn't come down. It was Jesus, the Son of God, who came down in the flesh. He was betrayed. He was talked about. People wanted to kill him. He was abandoned. His friends were always bickering. Oh, my gosh. He has in three years. I don't know how... He was able to like contain himself. But he says, see, I have given you someone to represent you. So I want you to know that whenever you're accused, either by men or by your own self or by the devil, you have to say, you know, what? excuse me. I think it's time that you talk to my uh, mediator. Who is it? But don't go to court like that right here. Jesus. No, I was going to say something, but I'm not going to say it. But we have Jesus. Do you understand? You have Jesus. We have Jesus. We have Jesus who is, who is interceding before the Father on our behalf. When you feel like no one understands you. However, have you ever felt like no one, under, no one will get me? No one knows what I feel. You don't, you don't understand what I've been through. Uh, excuse me, but the Bible says that Jesus is our mediator. He, he is our high priest. And he knows how to sympathize because he's been through everything and then some. So you're never alone. And whatever he has asked you to do, whatever he has called you to do, whatever your purpose is, you will see it come to pass. I don't care how you feel. Say, I don't care how I feel. I know it's hard to say that, huh? Because you're feeling it. Okay, but at some point, I have to choose. I have to choose to say, okay, 
Virginia, are you going to believe yourself? You're going to believe the liar? You're going to believe so-and-so? You're going to believe your past? You're going to believe your pain? You're going to believe every affliction? Or you're going to believe God? What? You have a choice. We always say, but I have no choice. No, we always have a choice. And when you're choosing, you're still choosing. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.